let's talk about what we can forecast and what's easy to forecast and what's difficult to forecast. First of all, let's be clear what is a forecast. Um, the Australian government produces these things every year and they call them forecasts, but they're clearly not. This is uh, published forecasts in quotes of uh, Commonwealth underlying cash balance. And you can see the actual numbers and the forecast numbers made in seven consecutive years. And every year it's, the forecast is way higher than what actually happens. I call these hope casts rather than forecasts. They're published for political reasons rather than because it's a genuine attempt to predict what's going to happen in the future. So we're not talking about that. We're talking about trying to predict the future accurately. One of the most common uh, forecasts that everyone is familiar with is the weather forecast, where people try to predict what's going to happen to temperature or rainfall or humidity or other meteorological phenomena in the coming days. Uh, people try to predict what's going to happen to the stock market. And so we have forecasts of closing prices on various different types of stocks or forecasts of stock indexes like the Dow Jones index. People can try to forecast exchange rates uh, and, and make money on whether the exchange rate's going up or down by buying and selling at the right time. You might not think of the sunset or the sunrise as time as a forecast, but it, it is. It's just a very, very accurate forecast, very small margin of error. People predict when comets are going to be visible, uh, and that can be done quite accurately too, even tens or hundreds of years into the future. One of the things that I've spent a bit of time on is forecasting pharmaceutical sales uh, of different products for both pharmaceutical companies, but also for the Australian government. I've done a fair bit of work on forecasting electricity demand, uh, predicting peak demand for different parts of Australia, uh, trying to understand what the extreme demands are going to be into the future. Forecasts of COVID-19 have become quite an important uh, input into planning and, and response to the pandemic. Forecasting tourists uh, has another topic that has occupied my attention. This is uh, a photograph of one of the uh, great tourist attractions not far from where I live, along the uh, south coast of Victoria. Okay, so there's lots of things we can forecast, lots of things I've tried to forecast. Um, here's a list of some of those things. And I'd like you to think about which of these is the easiest to forecast and which is the most difficult. You might like to pause the video for a, for a few minutes and think about what order you would put these in, in terms of the most, uh, the, the simplest to forecast at the top and the most difficult to forecast at the bottom. In doing that exercise, you, uh, you would have had to think carefully about, well, what does it mean to be easy to forecast? Before I address that, let's just, I'll, let me just show you the order I would put them in. Firstly, the time of sunrise this day next year, even though it's a long time away, uh, is actually extremely easy to forecast. Uh, the timing of the next Halley's Comet appearance is also very easy. Um, so I'll put those two first. Next on the list, I'd put forecasting the temperature tomorrow. And the reason is that we the reason we can do that relatively well is we have very good models of meteorology of the way the weather unfolds, at least over short periods of time, up to a few days. Forecasting daily electricity demand is also relatively easy compared to some of the other ones on this list. And that's because it's largely driven by temperatures. So because we can predict temperatures quite well, we can also predict electricity demand quite well. Electricity demand is largely driven by heating and cooling, which of course is affected by temperature. Then we have sales of drugs. That's a little bit more difficult, a little bit more variable. And then at the bottom of the list, I have the three finance ones, which are quite tricky. Forecasting the Google stock price tomorrow is easier than forecasting an exchange rate in a week's time, which is easier than forecasting a stock price in six months time. 
And so the reason these are ordered this way is simply because of the time horizon. The sooner, the, the, the closer it is, the easier it is to forecast. Okay, in doing that exercise, we have to think about how do you measure easiest and what is it that makes something easy or difficult to forecast? Um, so we'll talk a little bit about how we measure easiest later on in this course. Uh, what makes something easy or difficult to forecast is we can discuss now. I've come up with four different things that I think contribute to how, how easy it is to forecast something. So something is easier to forecast if we actually understand a lot about what drives its variation. If we have a good understanding of the factors that contribute to that thing. Secondly, we need a lot of data so we can build a model. Thirdly, you want the future to be somewhat similar to the past, at least in a way that you can model. That doesn't mean the future has to be exactly the same as the past. It just means that the way things are changing has to continue into the future. And lastly, you want the forecast not to affect the thing you're trying to forecast. So if you think about something like, um, you know, like electricity demand, we have a pretty good understanding of the factors that contribute to it. It's driven by temperatures and to some extent by calendar variations like time of day or time of week or holidays. Uh, so we, we know what's, what's going on there. There's lots and lots of data available. Usually we have hourly or half hourly data going back at least 10, sometimes 20 years. The future is somewhat similar to the past, at least in the short term. If we try to forecast 10 years ahead, we're gonna have difficulty with electricity demand because technology is changing. But if you're trying to forecast you know, up to a few months ahead, the future is gonna be somewhat similar to the past. And lastly, the forecast you make about electricity demand are not going to affect the demand. So the for because the forecast can't affect the thing you're trying to forecast, um, that makes it a little easier. It's actually not quite true, that last one, because electricity companies, if they think there's going to be a huge demand, might take some action to try to reduce the amount of power people use. Um, by offering price incentives or, or things like that. On the other hand, think about something like exchange rates. Exchange rates are, uh, are difficult to forecast because they tend to fluctuate in quite um, unexpected ways. So we don't actually have a good understanding of why those fluctuations are occurring. Um, they're essentially random. We do have a lot of data available though, going back you know, many, many years. The future is uh, somewhat similar to the past. Um, so those two conditions are not a problem. But the fourth one is a problem. The forecasts do affect the thing you're trying to forecast. If some well-known person publicizes an exchange rate forecast, then you know, like, like the treasurer of a, of a country, for example, then that will directly affect the thing you're trying to forecast. And so you have some feedback, which causes some problems. So they're the, they're the factors that I think make it easier or difficult to forecast something. So the other thing to keep in mind here is that the further ahead you forecast, generally the more difficult it is. Um, so if you're trying to forecast something only a short period ahead, even if it's a difficult thing like an exchange rate, you're trying to forecast what's the exchange rate going to be in half an hour's time, you've got a very good idea because it's pretty much what it is now. But if you're trying to forecast what the exchange rate is in a year's time, well, it could be you know, it could be hugely different from what it is now. So that makes it much more difficult. Sometimes there's no data at all available. So number two is not satisfied. And then we're gonna need different types of forecasting tools to tackle that problem. Uh, and sometimes the future is not at all similar to the past because you know, things are going to be changing in a way that your past data is no longer going to be useful. And that's going to make it difficult as well. So we're going to talk about how to solve those sorts of problems as we go through the book. 